Hi, welcome to another Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do this. This is a kind of a new sewing machine to me. I haven't really dealt with these before, but this is a bonus fur sewing machine and it was made to sew fur. Uh, I actually bought this machine uh, locally here in Colorado. Um, there was a furrier in Denver that had been around since I think the 20s or something like that. And uh, it was downtown. I hadn't been to the actual place. I bought it from the son or grandson of the original owner. Uh, the fur company finally went out of business, I think in like 2000 maybe. Uh, and he had two of the original machines left over uh, and was just trying to, he had a warehouse and he's trying to get rid of them. And I bought both of them. Uh, I kept this one, I sold the other one. Uh, this one's on, I won't say it's the original table. It's the original table to the machine that, that we used, but uh, this table, I think it's just your standard H-leg uh, wood table. It's not a bonus uh, machine table, because I've seen those online where you'd actually see a, a bonus uh, tag on it. Kind of like Union Special would make their own tables and Singer makes their own tables. I'm assuming this is an old Singer table. I'm not positive. I haven't really looked underneath it to see. Uh, but this is a bonus fur sewing machine, and this is referred to as the Model A. Uh, and A was the first one, obviously, they made. Uh, and these went over great. These machines were made, and this particular machine actually was used in the Furrier business for years, obviously, decades. Uh, and it would, this is for sewing lighter weight furs, like um, mink, uh, like muskrat, like uh, fox, anything that's lighter weight. Uh, what I want to get into is actually sewing shearling and I need a heavier duty machine because the, the fur is so much thicker and the leather than uh, the lighter ladies furs uh, of that era that this machine would have gone. But I'm going to show you the machine uh, and you can kind of take a look at what a fur sewing machine is. So here's the machine. It's really cute. These are little machines. I've actually had a few of these over the years that I've picked up, but I never used them. Uh, it's just that I knew they were cool machines and I just got them. Uh, I was going to use them. Uh, then the more I researched it, I realized these are for lighter weight. This could be great for fabric, uh, anything like that. Uh, just not the heavy, heavy duty stuff that I want to do. But here you go. This is the bonus never stop model. It doesn't say A, but it is an A model. Uh, the machine basically does this kind of crazy chain stitch in a way. It's one thread. I have, um, this is your thread stand that comes with it, but I didn't have a really thin thread. Uh, all I had was this really, this old Kmart thin thread. I was just trying to test it. Uh, and it was too fat. This was too fat for the little hole that the, your normal thread. So I just put it in an old uh, oil can just to, so it could spin. Uh, but um, these are the machines. This is your, uh, just like a normal machine. Uh, but this one actually rotates backwards, like a normal industrial uh, where they rotate towards you. This rotates away from you, kind of like the Singer 114 embroidery. Uh, so you, how it works, and as you can see, I'll just move it around. It's just a square little machine. It has one tensioner up here. This is an oiler, oiler. It's a normal machine where you would, you know, lift it up and put your oil in. Um, so how it works is your thread comes through. Uh, there's a little, where is it? There it is. So there's a little eyelet thingy there or a pigtail -y eyelet. It goes over the tensioner, comes back down through another little pigtail, comes through, there's a little I'm going to point with. There's a little thing here. It goes through a little hole, goes around this little spring, which, or it's actually, it's a screw, but it has a little bit of a spring, <laughs> has a little bit of a spring to it. And then it goes through under here, around this side, comes back through, and then goes through 
a little kind of a slot hole there and then threads up underneath the needle. So I'm gonna show you what you do. So when you push down on your pedal, it actually opens the, the two wheels. I don't know the official names of these. Um, and so what happens also on the different machines, you can get different wheels for the fur you're sewing. So this is a real fine wheel, see that? But uh, a thicker fur, you would have it, would be a little bit, the, the actual gears would be a little thicker. Uh, wouldn't be this fine. Now the way to change your stitch length is through this, you unscrew it, and you move it back and forth. It's not really gauged, it's just kind of how you, you know, you kind of get, it's not like it's, we're on a minimum gauge, he's like, it's not numbered where you can come back and forth. Uh, but here's your, your thread. It has the tiniest needle. Uh, there it is. Now these needles are very delicate. Uh, and you can see when it sews, it moves up. This little wee hand thing comes here. It moves catches the thread and I'll show you a little bit of sewing. I got it working. Again, I'm new to these machines. I don't know these machines that much, uh, but I did get a package of uh, needles for it. Uh, and this particular one, they come very small. They, it's these 292 is the subclass, I guess, of needles for this. And this says A. So this is for the A machine. These won't work in the the machines that were made after that. So, uh, and now also this, this table, since it was made for furriers, they put this little device on here that has, uh, it's a little measuring. Instead of the, the classic ruler that's usually tape or uh, nailed to the front, they actually made this little thing that pulls out. So I guess you can put your pieces on there. Uh, again, I'm not a furrier, so I don't know if this is a normal or if that's just kind of how it is. Uh, the table's kind of neat. It's got a couple features. You can see they were a smoker. Uh, whenever you see an old table like this that has this, and I've seen it much, much worse than this. Uh, so what would happen is the uh, operator, you know, they'd have their cigarette, they set it down here, they'd work, and then they come back and get their cigarette. So as it's sitting here, it slowly burns. So I've seen them where it was, uh, there's a couple tables I've had that uh, it's like, it looks like a leopard pattern. It's just, it's crazy all the way around. So I'm gonna uh, put, uh, get back on the tripod and I'm going to show you some sewing. Okay, we're gonna try this. I know I've got the, this thing isn't set properly, but you'd put your two pieces of fur in there. Try not to get it going too fast. Guess once you get this just right, it'll be great. But right now it's not just right. So I can see the thread gut wrapped up around the uh, the needle there but that kind of gives you the idea as you can see it's a real fine little stitch that it makes which is great for furs but again this isn't really a machine for me uh, I think I'm gonna do a lot better with the bigger version of this for shearling because that's really what I want to do and it's a much bigger needle it's just more what I'm used to with industrial machines is something big if you remember my previous video where I was unboxing, I unboxed this, which is a bonus B model. Now this one I think can do shearling. Uh, I, ideally, I think I need the next model up, uh, but this one apparently can handle she shearling. Uh, it's very similar. If you look, the two of them are very, very similar. Uh, the, just visually, I think the discs are a little bit bulkier maybe uh, between the two of them. But I think the inside guts are what really does it of it being able to uh, push and handle heavier work. 
Um, the thing is I don't have the bee needles. Uh, they're very kind of difficult to find without having to buy a hundred of them. And I don't really want to buy a hundred of them because uh, I don't think I need a hundred of them, but who knows, maybe I do by the time I start breaking them. But um, this is the bonus B, uh, which is really, really similar to the bonus A. Uh, so what I'll probably do is I'll just sell this one and I believe the base plate is about the same. It'll drop right on there and I'll be good to go on this table. Although I may put a servo on this because that clutch motor's a bit more than I need uh, for speed and being able to, uh, especially learning how to do it, I don't want to hurt anything and ruin anything. One cool thing on the uh, A machines, this is the old style, is the oil reserve. Uh, I'll show you that. So under here, uh, again, I don't think these pedals are bonus. They're just generic pedals because they don't, I guess they kind of match each other. Uh, but this is, it's a little beehive uh, thing of glass for the oil instead of, uh, it's just, it's kind of a nice feature. And I believe that's original to these vintage bonus machines. So there you have it. The bonus A sewing machine and the bonus B sewing machine. Uh, not that clever with the names, but you know what you have. Because um, again, they didn't make a billion machines like Singer of all different stuff. They, they, they probably have maybe 20 different versions of these and for different applications. Um, the company is still in business uh, although I don't think they make new machines. Uh, the bonus company in New York though, uh, they refurbish machines. Um, and you can buy, although maybe you can buy new machines, I'm not positive. Uh, but um, you can definitely uh, buy refurbished machines that they pick up and then uh, get it all back to normal. And you can get all the parts there too, which is really nice. Because they probably have all the same machinery to make everything. Uh, again, there's not that much to the machines, so, um, and they're all kind of the same in a way. So uh, it's kind of like Murrow. They kind of make the same machine, but each one's a little different. Uh, so that's the reason they can keep going forever and ever and ever. Um, so there you go. Uh, it's a fur machine if you don't have one and it's something you want to get into. Uh, these A machines, you can pick them up uh, for, you know, the $500 range in that range, uh, maybe a little bit more. The B machines are more, they're more like in the seven to nine range probably. And then you go to the next level of the, uh, the bigger boys and they're in like in the 1200s uh, and up. Uh, so uh, if you can find one, and of course, this is an exclusive to bonus. Um, there were a lot of companies that made this type of machine. Uh, none of them I think are in business, uh, but I do think some of the Chinese brands make a version of this that you can buy if you wanted that, but I wouldn't suggest that. Uh, but you can if that's something you want to do. I like the vintage stuff. Uh, I didn't go with some of the other vintage ones that I've seen popped up because I just know I can't get parts for them. And I know bonus I can if I need to. Uh, even needles, I can get them if I need to where the other ones I don't know if I can because the companies went out of business in the 60s. Um, uh, there you go. Uh, if you like this type of stuff, uh, please subscribe, comment, like. Uh, if you see anything that I did wrong, which I probably did, let me know. Uh, and if you have any questions, and if I can answer them, I will. Uh, again, I don't know these machines like the regular industrials, like Singers and Union Specials and that sort of thing. But it's just a neat part of the industrial sewing uh, world that uh, it's its own little genre niche uh, that is out there. And uh, it's kind of neat. Thank you.